The one thing which I think increasingly newsrooms are doing is we're, we're all becoming more and more online in terms of our investigative uh, presence. I think we, so, and that has a, a plus side and a negative side. On the plus side, um, I think there's, there's a lot of information out there that reveals itself. Um, so the way we found about Eric Pickles having an off-agenda meeting with lobby groups in the Ritz, and that wasn't uh, in his diary and recorded anywhere, um, is because the lobbyist... Uh, by being a lobbyist and desperate to prove to everyone that he's got great connections, had wrote, written this deeply sycophantic blog about saying how great his meal with Eric Pickles was. And we looked at this blog and then we compared it to his diary and said, we can't see this meal anywhere. So that was really just using the, the vanity of others to ensnare them. And I think vanity is something that often gets people in the end. Um, that's obviously one area. But the flip side of that is that I think it becomes too seductive. We, become, uh, we think, oh, it's a nice warm room, we're sitting in our chair, I don't have to interact with people. And we, over time, I think we can, as people, uh, get distance from the, thr the thrust and grime of, of going down to a pub and having a pint with a contact. And uh, the flip side of that is that you know, I, spend, I spend a lot of my time you know, arranging meetings, you know, going out and, and having conversations face to face. Because I think when you sit down and you truly ask somebody you know, a question, um, people like to talk about what they do and how, you know, where they're coming from. And you can get quite a lot of information through cultivating good contacts. So um, to get a good story, cultivating contacts, uh, utilizing the uh, the, the systems available, particularly in governmental level, whether it's freedom of information or scrutinizing things like Hansard and looking at uh, diaries which might be publicly available, looking at register of interest, looking at hospitality indices, all of these things is in the round means you can pick out a number of areas and it's very useful then to cross compare those da that data. But often the original imperative and the impetus, sorry, the original impetus to go and get a story is led by something that is not online. It's somebody actually whispering in your ear saying, you know what, this is something you should look at. And, and, and good journalism often begets better journalism in the sense that you, you investigate something and then you get an email three days later saying, you think that's, that's bad. I'll tell you something that's really bad. So um, it, it's about not only uh, cultivating contacts, but also as a journalist yourself, making sure that you are very accessible. Having an online presence, having a Twitter presence, having a Facebook presence, make it very easy for people within a few clicks to find out who you are, find out how to contact you and get in touch. Because the hardest thing, um, unless of course you're into investi investigating the mafia and you don't really want to be found, but the hardest thing, if you're in a more general, let's look at open society and you know, corporate corruption, I think you need to make sure you're accessible on many levels and you know, make sure that your, your online presence as well as your, your blogs and posts and, and, and articles and films are all centrally collated so that people can get a gauge of what sort of person you are and whether you might be able to help them in their quest for uh, transparency.